we're in a beautiful Suffolk Lane, just on the edge of the village of Coney Weston. This is here the Church of St. Mary. Well, we're under the tree at the moment, or a number of trees. Beautiful, look how, look at this. We'll walk around and have a look at the front of the church. And on this beautiful, quiet lane, from this side we can see that this church, which hasn't a tower, and that's unusual, but it does have a fantastic thatched roof on half of the church. And a lovely little wooden fence. The church here is called St. Mary's Coney Weston. Rather antique looking gate, but the church is open. Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? So we'll walk up this little gravel path. And how fantastic is that? We can hear the trees here, massive trees. And the leaves are rustling in the wind. We'll walk through here into this churchyard and graves everywhere here. A lot of more recent ones. And older ones here. And the shadows of the trees. What a fabulous sight. Little cross over there. Ah, oh, it's fantastic. Look at the colors, look at the green and lights. What a lovely scene. Look at that in that picket fence. How wonderful is that? Oh, now the sun's come out for an instant. You can tell again how impressed I am. But we turn and look under this tree and up at the front of the church here where there would normally be a tower. And you see a big cross at the top. This is flint and stone. Very old. Big buttress here. That little tower running up the side there. Shadow of the tree, we find more graves, crosses, the wind blowing the leaves again. There's an area here of more recent headstones. Side of the churchyard, we've got this nice bench to sit down. We'll have a sit down and have a look at this church. Ah, oh, it's better. Well, so we're in a secluded churchyard in a secluded part of Suffolk, sitting on this lovely old bench reflecting on the beauty of what we find in front of us is a fantastic little church. The thatch roof, the thatch roof, or half thatched building. The wind is quite strong at the moment and it's blowing all these trees around us. And yet we're in the shelter of them so it's quite calm here. So I think we'll 
have a look inside. So we'll walk back over the rear of the church and look at these graves a bit. Don't know whether we can read any of them. That looks a bit worn, weathered. The double one there. Birds are singing. These trees. We have a look at the church here. We can see that tower at the end. That's very impressive and picturesque. And here, look, we've got what's going on here? We've got one arch at the end there on the right, another one in the middle, and one here. And they're all bricked in, and a new door has been put in there, and a new window has been put in there. So, what happened? We don't know. Well, I don't know. I can only guess. But something has over the years. All the grey stones here are quite worn. of double ones. They're always charming and yet sad. They're usually husband and wife. It's a memory of Francis. difficult to read. It's too worn. Stones at the back of the church here, but they're all fairly weathered. Very difficult to read them completely. That's George Lloyd, and he died in 1893. Eight, So we'll turn and have a look at the, what probably is the altar end of the church here. Big cross reflecting a shadow against the sky. The odd vehicle passing by this quiet lane lovely place and look at the fields here. Lovely church. People must have walked miles to come to this church a couple of hundred years ago. And here look on this side. What's going on here? Three windows in a wall that's had major restoration work. And this here, this little arch. Oh, oh dear. In the middle of the countryside, we've got yet, yet another wheelie bin. We've got angels. Is that, well, that's old. That's old. The sun's come out and shining against that part of the church. It looks beautiful. So we come up a slight slope actually to this porch. A nice cross at the top with ramparts and it looks beautiful. Big columns. Very impressive with their little church. And very kindly because it's on a slope. A handrail's been added each side. A local brick floor. This would be Suffolk brick. Used in all the houses around here on the floors. Usually put straight down on the earth. You hear a bee buzzing around in here or a fly. And here we've got a plain glass window. 
obviously the old leaded windows which were probably here have been replaced ceiling has all been plastered and painted a few times mats to wipe our feet try this wooden door well we come into a cute little church there's font immediately to our left, a big wooden cover over it, a visitor's book, very kindly put down, which we'll sign in a moment, a nod to the reality of modern living as a gas heater there. It's in a good spot here where the organist can get some heat. So the organ is actually looks really out of place here because this building looks so old and like an old cottage being plastered and a delicate colour in the um, edges of the stone and the alcoves have been left and highlighted so they, they just make everything look so nice and the staining of the patina of the walls is fabulous Charming is the uh, impression you get. We've got a more, more memorial over here. We'll have a look. Memory of the airmen of 388 Group who lost their lives in combat and in tribute to the dead of all the United Nations who gave their lives for freedom. We, soldiers of this United States Air Force Station, humbly dedicate this flag. 30th of May, 1944. That's um, very moving. That's a moving plaque, and that was put up before the war ended. And it's sitting here still, and we're looking at it in 2015. Yeah. We're standing here now with the organ behind us in a position where I would normally be having a tower behind us. And we're looking down at the altar. The church is very well lit with large plain glass windows and a light open feel because of a ceiling that's been plastered over and it doesn't have the dark wood that most of these churches have and the walls are fairly light because of being painted to our left here we'll just have a look there's another noting that we've got here some old paraffin lamps. Look at that. They're wonderful. With a reflector. Beautiful. I wonder when the last time they were used. Probably put candles in them now. They're all down the walls each side. It's an area that hasn't been painted on that wall, or perhaps there was a memorial that's come away. Not too sure what that is. Some other marks there. Another couple of gas heaters here. Spoil the feeling of the church, but probably a necessity. Now we can 
See how small this church is, really? Though it looks bigger because of the plastered ceiling. Behind the pulpit, there's nothing memorial. And yet, more items set here in these beautiful two alcoves. On either side, to our right and to our left, we've got beautiful flower arrangements. And yet again, I thank the kind people that have worked on these flowers. Have a look at this other one. That's beautiful, eh? Over here we've got two little alcoves. Beautifully painted. There's carpet running down the central aisle and it's possible that there are grey stones underneath but we can't see them. The area where the altar is is all plain glass. And the window behind the altar is so large and so clear and so clean that this part of the church is so well lit. It's very bright in here. And here we've got a wooden ceiling. My guess is that this is a newer extension. Or newer than the previous part we just looked at, which we had a thatch roof. That's a beautiful wood ceiling again. With a mixture of wood floor and tiled. See, here's a grave here actually. I don't know if we can see a date on it. Old and cracked and as we can see we've got a date here of 1663 August. Little notice here. Touches of grandeur here. This little area here looks very grand. I am the bread of life. Below that beautiful clear glass window, letting in all the light with the trees behind, waving in the breeze. Two more flower arrangements on the altar. Over here, Morris Alexander. He was the late rector of this parish 
and he died in February 1733, age 46. And two of his children, Jane and Charles, who died young. The righteous hath hope in his death. We can stand here in this echoey part of the church, which is so well lit, so bright, and look down into the older part of the church, which has the thatched roof. It's much darker. It's very quiet in here. Very quiet. Lovely. We walk down the aisle here. These little candle holders. As we go down, the curtain around the door to keep the draft out. Then we get a final look again that we've got two ceilings, one at the end newer roof made of wood and this one where the, the ceiling's plastered over and that's because of course it's a thatch roof and it wouldn't be this type of structure here but this area looks much brighter and older more cottagey it's probably seen some changes over the years but it's charming walk back out through the porch and down these little steps or a slope using the handrail and we've got a, quite a smart little path here with trees each side and gate at the bottom and look at the view look at the view the clouds are just going over and hiding the sun but we have a final look at the little church here St Mary's Coney Weston well, I don't know, cute is, is, is how I would call it. It's fairy tale, really. But that really kind of pretentious porch. Just look at how impressive that is. And then be immediately behind it is a thatched roof. Cute is, is, is just the word I would say. That was a really enjoyable visit.